Hey guys, it is Tyler here, back once again with another episode of Assassin's Creed The Truth. Now, there's some fucking construction going on outside, so hopefully that doesn't... You can't hear any of that. I don't think you can, but just fair warning, that might be going on through some of this fucking video. They're annoying the shit out of me, but that's alright. We're gonna talk about some cool shit. Got some creepy stuff behind me there. Some blood riding on a wall. And, uh, yeah, that's right, we're talking about Subject 16. Now, I've got, yes, another crazy theory for you guys. I love these. I've been thinking about this one for a while and I wasn't sure how I was going to do this video or how to explain it, but I thought since I'm returning with this series again, let's just go all out and talk mad shit about stuff because why not? Let's just do some crazy things. So the video topic today is, is Subject 16 a sage? Was he a sage? Is it possible that he's a sage? Well, I'm going to talk about reasons why, but also why not. Now, the first thought I had of this is, like Sage's, Subject 16 has a lot of similarities in terms of having visions, having a strong connection with Juno, and to the past and shit like that. He's very strange, like Sage's are. Now, the first thing I wanted to address was the questions people would have straight away, putting their hand up like, Tyler, Tyler, Tyler. But Sages weren't even in Assassin's Creed canon during the time Subject 16 was around. Yeah, that's true. So this is the first a very obvious reason why in the original writing, 16 isn't a Sage. And it'd have to be something later retconned or maybe later addressed. That they're like, yeah, it makes sense that 16's a Sage. We'll write it into canon. Obviously, at the moment, it's not. I'm just coming up with reasons why I think he very well could be a Sage. Now, another thing could be people saying... But, John from IT was a sage, and there can't be two sages at once. Well, there definitely can be multiple sages at once. It's already been confirmed in Assassin's Creed Syndicate. A ten-year-old boy, the possible Desmond's son, he's a sage. He was alive the same time John from IT was alive, and he's a sage. So, we know in canon that multiple sages can be around, and people just think it's a reincarnation of Aida. That's what a sage is. It is, and it isn't. It's Aida's consciousness that's been transferred through a uh, equation, through a calculation that Juno's put out into the human genome. So that's not like it's one mind that dies and then he just magically teleports to another mind. No, he's inside all humans' DNA somewhere but pops up in multiple places. There could be no sage for a hundred years or there could be five sages alive at one time. It's random. And it just happens that way. That's why Juno's searching to come up with the proper calculation so she can predict where sages are going to come from. Now, this isn't the video about sage lore and shit. I've already done that. You can check that out in another video. But this is a video that I feel like I needed to address that fact to even begin to discuss why Subject 16 could be classed as a sage. Now, we know Subject 16 was a prisoner in Abstergo before Desmond Miles, Subject 17. During July and August of 2012, I believe, was the time that Clay Kazmarek, Subject 16, was imprisoned there with Lucy Stillman and Warren Vidic doing experiments on him, putting in the animus, finding memories of people like Ezio Auditore, among others. Now, during that time, Clay was visited by Juno. Juno sent... A message explaining the end of the world and what needed to be done and that he needed to send a message to Desmond Miles. We see this in the Lost Archives DLC in Assassin's Creed Revelations. I can see what has been, what will be. But what you must do is clear. Help Desmond Miles. I... No. Not me. I refuse. Thousands of years has desecrated. Lumen's promise shall be fulfilled. Go forth with eyes open to all of the truth. Now, from that, we see that Juno obviously talked to 16. We don't see the whole conversation. I feel feel like that was pretty clear, that we got, like, the end of the conversation. We don't know exactly what she was saying to him or what he heard or anything like that. There could have been some crazy shit she told him. She very well might have said that... I need you to bring me back, and that's what's going to happen if Desmond helps me, but you can't tell him that kind of thing. Or she could have tricked him like she's tricked so many others before 16. We just don't know exactly what he told her, but we know that it involved 
Clay needing to kill himself and get a message to Desmond through the animus and through the blood and all this sort of stuff because Juno knew that Subject 17, Desmond Miles, was going to be the next one experimented on. We also know that Subject 16 went crazy. We're told that this is because of the animus. Now, there's a lot of evidence in Assassin's Creed canon that past subjects using the animus went fucking crazy. But there's some that didn't go as crazy as others. Now, 16 went full crazy, cutting himself open, leaving blood messages and symbols that we don't understand on the walls. And when you look at other sages, and this is another thing I needed to address about sages as well, is that some sages know that they're special. They know that they're different. Pretty much all sages would, but most sages aren't self-aware of themselves. You look at Germain in Assassin's Creed Unity or Jack de Malay, they knew they were special. They had visions and things like that from the past like all sages do, but they didn't know who they were or their destiny. Whereas John from IT or Roberts from Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag knew that they were trying to bring back Juno. That was their goal. They knew who they were to a certain extent. Not all sages do. So that's something that also needs to be addressed for people saying you can't be possible because Clay doesn't know he's a sage. He would know. He doesn't necessarily know unless Juno told him. You just don't know. And also with the eyes. When it comes to the eyes of Subject 16, he doesn't have the sage eyes. Again, not all sages have the eyes. Jack de Malay, the last Grand Master during the public Templar Order in real history and in Assassin's Creed canon during the 1300s when he was executed at the start of Assassin's Creed Unity, you look at his eyes, they're the same color, and he's a sage. So, that's a lot of things that kind of just, we can cut away and say that's still possible. That doesn't rule out 16 to being a sage. Now, then you look at him going crazy. The visions he saw, very similar to stuff, like this stuff you see on the wall here. Very similar to things that we see that Germain saw and other sages saw in their visions of the past. These are the, sh this is the shit. This is the shit sages saw and see and write down. I'm sure in Jacques de Malay's codex that Germain read and all that sort of stuff, these are the sorts of symbols that he envisioned and saw, as well as other things I'd imagine that drove him crazy. As 16 drove crazy with knowing what the Templars are planning, that Juno probably showed him, that Vision showed him, things like that, and also seeing so many calculations of time. Dub McDevitt also addressed during the time of Revelations, and maybe even later on during Black Plague, that the reason Clay said the son your son, and it was spelt differently, and the reasons why Clay was going so crazy in the truth messages to Desmond that we saw in Assassin's Creed 2 and Assassin's Creed Brotherhood and among the writing and all that shit, was that Clay saw too many timelines or was locked in too many timelines, or saw too many calculations in terms of the first civilization that he was shown. Now that's interesting. That's very interesting the way he worded that, seeing too many calculations, too many timelines, because sure, he was in the Animus, that's true, that's totally the way to explain it all off. But in terms of seeing so many calculations from the first civilization, that's something that we can see through sages. Sages have that conflicting timeline in the head of the first Civ. Now, I'm not sure, and when you look at this and you go to debunk it, you can easily explain it off with Animus going crazy, but I mean, Desmond didn't go insane from the Animus. He had visions. He struggled, but he didn't go insane or mental the way we were all told he was going to. Maybe that's bad writing that they never followed up with that storyline that they've been building up, the consequence to using the Animus. Or maybe it's to say that 16 was different, was a bit weird, or weirder than 17. Maybe Sage. I'm not entirely sure, we don't know. Now the main reason I kind of thought that was Juno's real interest in him and using him. And I mean, let's look at it this way. What does Juno need the Sages for? Well, they're supposed to help her come back. What did she use 16 for? She used him to help herself. She talked directly to him. Now, the thing is, we don't know how she talked to him. Did she talk to him like she is able to communicate with other sages through memories or visions? Or was it just as Clay went through the Animus with different ancestors, Juno met those ancestors and talked 
to 16 through there, we're not exactly sure how they communicated, which is the interesting thing about all this, which is kind of like, well, he could or couldn't be a sage. We just, we're just not 100% sure. We just don't know. Now, plenty of reasons why he couldn't be a sage is, you can explain it, is the Animus is supposed to have negative effects with long-term use. Lucy herself says they kept him in the Animus for way too long. So the possibilities there. He also showed no signs of Aida's memory or consciousness inside of him, other than the fact that he went a bit loopy and crazy. Again, you can explain that from the Animus. It doesn't mean he's Aida. It's just from things like the symbols he saw, from the visions he had, from Juno's strong interest in him and connection to him, that it's possible that 16 may have very well been a sage. He showed signs, it's possible, but again, it's just one of my psycho theories I like to come up with. So, you just don't know. I like to think about it. I'd like to know what you guys think down in the comments. Is it even possible? Could it be something they address later on in canon with Assassin's Creed? Or am I just an insane person as per usual? Anyway, guys, that's about it for me. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next episode of Assassin's Creed The Truth.